Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and today we're gonna to talk about the distressed sellers right now that are being forced to sell as a result of skyrocketing expenses to own real estate. I thought it would be perfect to talk about the subject being that I'm actually in Florida right now on vacation trying to take a break. So we're gonna be talking about that today, and let me kind of show you guys where I'm at just real quick and i'm going to take you guys through these dunes right here to the beach and i'm going to show you where i'll be for the next few days basically just getting some r and r doing some land-based shark fishing it's all catch and release that is the public way so you're supposed to go that way i'm going to actually take this way right here because it's a lot better view and it's a lot funner trail. Homeowners in Florida right now are getting hit particularly hard with additional expenses that they didn't have two or three years ago. And let me explain why expenses going up like this are so bad for so many people. And by expenses, obviously what I'm referring to is two things predominantly. Number one, the astronomically high property taxes. Now, one of the predominant reasons that property taxes has skyrocketed skyrocketed over the last two years is assessed value. An assessed value is where the county goes out to your property and comes up with the value for your house. Now, the reason why these assessed values are skyrocketing upward is because now the counties and the taxing jurisdictions have comps or comparable sales of homes that show the values have greatly gone up. And I could tell you personally on a property that I owned, it actually went up $80,000 as far as assessed value. So obviously property taxes through the roof right now and also, Again, really, really tragic, really, really sad. The home insurance crisis that's going on right now, specifically you guys in Florida. I also feel it in Texas, being that I'm in a hurricane area, but predominantly in Florida, insurance right now is through the roof. And not only is it through the roof, there's even insurance companies that are in Florida that plan on going out of business and not even insuring certain homeowners in the state of Florida. And I'm not talking a little bit of increase, y'all. I'm talking about a lot of increase, like thousands and thousands of dollars. And on my own insurance policy, again, in Texas, my insurance policy went up over $1,000 in addition to what it was already per year. Now, unfortunately, this will hurt homeowners the most that are on what was called fixed income, like social security income, maybe disability income. And the reason those homeowners are gonna, you know, essentially getting crushed so hard and will be forced to sell is, they're on a fixed income. They can't afford for anything in life or any expenses in life to go up. For example, you may have a household that has $4,000 a month. Every month they get it, it's for possibly disability. So they've planned their entire life with spending $4,000 a month counting their mortgage. So if their property taxes go up and their insurance goes up and say they go up by four to $500 a month, four to $500 a month increase in mortgage payment and expenses for people on fixed income in that scenario it's it's devastating a lot of people are gonna feel trapped like they can't get out from underneath the unaffordability and that's exactly what we see around pretty much around the world I think it's fair to say but definitely around the US the unaffordability right now is just so radical it's so out of control again we have to also understand there is a massive difference in home ownership post 2022 the people that are purchasing right now post 2022 are going to be the biggest at risk of additional forced selling but sellers will be forced to sell their houses obviously if they can no longer comfortably afford their houses and a lot of these people quite frankly should sell their houses a lot of people that purchased prior to 2022 can cash in so why would someone want to continue to struggle if they can just sell their house cash in on maybe 200 150 thousand dollars in equity and keep it going and the reality is that's exactly what we need to happen in this housing market so that we restore some balance and some affordability which sadly again is 
forced selling. We need more sellers to come to the market. Right now, what we have kind of working against us as far as additional price drops, because we've already had a nationwide price drop, double digit price drop, it's rebounded slightly. Now, two major things that I'm seeing. Number one, limited supply of resell inventory. But again, as home ownership continues to get more expensive for existing homeowners and current homeowners, the supply, the resale supply, it's only going to increase. Now, the other thing, and now that we have more data, it's really starting to become clearer how much excess savings is in the market. And I'll say this, the people that are struggling right now, they don't have excess savings. And more than likely homeowners that are on fixed incomes, they don't have excess savings. Why? Most people, unfortunately, are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's just the reality of the situation. So I'm taking you guys to the beach. I can actually see the beach right now, but look at how amazing this is. Y'all, I just needed to take a break. I needed to clear my mind. I've been really stressed, not because of just overwhelming, you know, amounts of hours analyzing and studying data, but I'm also overwhelmed y'all because, you know, I'm a one man army. I have to do all of this stuff myself, the editing, the titles, the thumbnails, and I love it and I don't mind doing that. But what's really making things difficult is I'm also on my own home buying journey. And you know, my goal was to purchase in February. You guys know I put an offer in. They rejected the offer, actually raised the asking prices. I don't know if they were upset at me. And then, you know, it sat on there and then they decided to rent it. So I didn't get that house, but you know, I'm frustrated you guys, so I, I wanted to take a break. And really what's been weighing on my mind is, is my family, my wife and my children. I'm good, I'm gonna be sleeping on the beach right behind me, but I really worry about them. And that puts a lot of additional pressure on my shoulders. So I finally kind of decided what we're gonna do. Now obviously, you know, as we can see here, the housing market is rebounding slightly, which is showing us a lot of things. It's showing us that the market has absorbed the interest rates already, at least as is. And again, predominant reason I think that is, obviously lack of inventory, but the excess savings. Now, obviously, as these expenses continue to mount, the excess savings is gonna dwindle, again, not only for current homeowners, but future homeowners. Now that property taxes and insurance are expensive for everyone, it's, not, it's gonna also put a damper on any future supply. And the amazing thing is, and I hate to say it, but this is what we need. We need the forced selling. If there's no forced selling right now, then it's gonna take a lot longer for our house market to actually rebound. So I'm almost here. I'm going through the dunes right now. I'm going to show you guys the beach that I'll be staying at. I'll be staying here for about four days. Um, I would have my truck on the beach. I'm actually have a pass to drive my truck on this beach, but I don't have my truck on this beach yet because the gates close at night and they open at 9 30 a.m and i didn't get here till late last night. I actually drove 12 hours so still super tired. You know take a look at this. This is so amazing y'all. This is where I'll be staying. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing that there's like no one on this beach? I can drive on this beach, I can camp on this beach. This is just such a great way to just really kind of just free your mind, decide what you want to do and readjust. Now, obviously I've been telling you what's on my heart, you know, what I'm stressed out about as far as my family, what I want to do as the provider of my family. I have decided what to do, but ultimately my point in talking to you guys about the unaffordability, forcing sellers, forcing homeowners to sell their house. Now that should also warn you as a potential homeowner and it should tell you that tread lightly. If you go into purchasing a home, then obviously you definitely want to be able to comfortably afford it. And I'm not saying go buy a house right now, but I am saying that if you are going to buy a house, you're probably going to want to use as many fundamentals as possible as far as finding a house that's affordable, using the data to find the deal and things of that nature. Now I've chose personally in my home buying journey to continue to rent. Now, unfortunately, it's been really, really difficult for us guys because I work out of my house. It's a smaller house. It's really, really hard to focus. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna bite the bullet 
and I'm gonna step up my rental. So we're actually gonna pay a little bit more money. We're gonna go into a nicer house and that's gonna allow me that peace of mind. And the thing is, is you know, we're not gonna be able to save as much money, but we've saved a lot of money. And for the last two, two and a half years, my wife and I have been sacrificing so that we're not a seller that needs to, you know, that's gonna be forced to sell the house. And the really scary, scary thing about all of this is if any of the recent owners okay so say anyone not anyone but a lot of people because every market is different we know this but a lot of people that purchased in 2022 if they have to sell right say they can no longer afford their house insurance skyrocketed too much and i'm not joking about insurance you guys in areas like this with all these hurricanes the insurance is just makes it almost impossible and actually there's condos all around me i don't know if you guys can see but there's condos all around me and the first question that everyone has about these condos that are for sale is how much is the insurance? Because the insurance, again, especially in Florida, it's shockingly high. It is shockingly high. The reality is, is with mortgages, if we look at 7% mortgage rate, 86% or over 85% of your payment goes towards interest for at least the first three years. So the whole argument that rent is 100% interest rate, I understand that, but when we actually look at mortgages and we look at the amortization schedule, for the first three years, most of the money is going towards interest anyways. So you're really not paying principal off for the first few years. So again, I'm gonna sit out the housing market predominantly for affordability and specifically for prices. And I'm not gonna be one of these people that is gonna be trapped in my house, underprepared, that's gonna be forced to sell. But listen, if they're upside down in their house, meaning that they owe more than the house is worth, what can they do? Say someone is upside down in their house, $50,000, they lost their job, they have to move, but they don't have the $50,000 that they're upside down in the house. What do they do, y'all? There's, there's really just three options. The first one, rent, right? They can try to rent it out and recover. And that's why I tell you guys, cash flow, do a rental analysis. My safeguard is 75% of median rent, but that's one option. A second option, very unfortunate, a short sell. A short sell is kind of like instead of foreclosure. But the problem is with the short sell, it still hurts your credit. It's still gonna hold you back. It still hurts you. I'm walking back through the dunes here. I'm gonna go sit at my truck and wait for this gate to open. But isn't this just, you know, a really, really amazing place? And I've actually switched my gear up as well. So I'm not holding a 20 pound camera rig and like holding it like way out in front of me. So my shoulders are burning. So I have a little bit of a different rig. I hope you guys like it. I'm a little bit nervous about the picture and audio. You guys know how much I love cinematography. And I'm actually gonna try to get some astro uh, photography tonight. I love doing time lapses of astrophotography, but that's neither here or there. My point is let's be educated homeowners. All of the red flags that we're seeing, the skyrocketing expenses, all of these things, let's understand that they exist. So we talked about property taxes skyrocketing, homeowners insurance skyrocketing, those additional expenses forcing thousands and thousands of sellers to have to list their properties. But now let's talk about the skyrocketing consumer debt. And we'll leave student loans out of this because you guys know the student loan payments are still paused. But when we add the additional interest rate hikes on credit cards and auto loans, this is a time bomb waiting to blow up. So there's gonna be a lot more people that are forced to sell. Now I made a hypothesis of what I believe it would take for normal sellers to be forced to sell. Because normal sellers before 2022 and homeowners are, you know, pretty strong, right? Probably strong, probably have a two or 3% interest rate and hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially in equity. Now, the primary reason that those people will have to sell, be forced to sell is debt, consumer debt. Credit card debt has absolutely exploded. Auto loans have absolutely, have, auto loans have absolutely exploded. Defaults are skyrocketing, so it's no question, people right now are struggling, and they're struggling with all areas of life, and we haven't even talked about the inflation, gas, eggs, all of these things. So to me, when things are at record high on affordability, when we have buyer's remorse surveys, these are all red flags that is telling me as a consumer on the sideline that unfortunately, and I don't want this, I'm gonna have to be patient. 
okay? Or I can just buy. I could just buy, but I'm not gonna do that. I have to be patient. If I'm not patient, then I could just buy, but I don't want to buy right now because for me and my family in the housing market, it's risk off. I'm not gonna be trapped in my house and I'm not gonna be forced to sell. I'm not gonna allow myself and my family to go through that. And because I've already went through that. And y'all, when I had back in 09, 08, 09 time, when I had my foreclosure, bankruptcy, repo, and a tax lien for the deficiency of the foreclosure. And you guys, one of the things that I remember most, like when I was depressed is, watching so many people that I felt at the time I was smarter than, right? Obviously I wasn't because I lost everything, but I watched so many people profit while I was forced to the sidelines. I mean, you guys, I was able to find houses for 40 cents on the dollar, fantastic deals, shocking hundreds and thousands of dollars below, you know, peak prices, and I couldn't do anything. I was forced to the sideline. And that's really what I'm holding on to now. That's why I'm putting myself through what I'm going through. That's why my family and I are struggling because I remember those days and that's what I'm fighting for now will we get it I think so I'm putting my money where my mouth is but I don't have a crystal ball right I'm just basing things off of history fundamentals we still need more sellers as evident in this current seasonal trends but the unaffordability is just shockingly out of control now the epicenter of the forced selling in my opinion number one is gonna be in Louisiana Louisiana defaults and delinquencies are skyrocketing. And also it'll be in places like Florida. And you have to understand the severity. Again, we talked about the fixed income, but the fact that homeowners insurance property taxes went up so quickly in a matter of a couple years, people don't have the ability to prepare for that in a way that they can survive. Some people will, but also y'all, some people won't. Now, having said all of that, I'm just not ready to buy. It's just too much dust in the air still. And honestly, guys, I'm starting to be freaked out that we're actually gonna go into a depression. I mean, this is just so, so crazy right now. My heart goes out to anyone that's on a fixed income watching this. I know how hard it, you know, it can be. I've helped a lot of people on fixed income. So I know the impact on a small fluctuation in monthly expenses. All right, guys, well, I'm at the highway, as you guys can see, so I'm about to get in my truck. You guys can see my truck over there. Hopefully this video turned out well. Like I said, it's a new rig, and uh, I'll be doing a couple more videos out here. It's just so much more relaxing. I drove 12 hours here, and during that entire 12 hours, I was just reflecting on my life, on my next moves, and what I think is gonna happen in the housing market next. So I'm hoping to come back from the trip, y'all, completely revived with great perspective. And as always, guys, if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck, and I hope you win.